Let's have a word of prayer. I want you to pray that the earnest desire of God will be brought to pass in your life. Commit yourself to the Lord. The choristers have just sung to us, nothing less but holiness. We've had this subject over and over, but I want you to pray that the Lord himself will do it for you. Maybe it's because of you that this subject is being revisited over and over. Pray that you will not be passed by. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you for bringing us once again to your presence and all that for all that you've been doing for us here today. We're asking that, Lord, as we continue in this service, you will yet speak to us and speak your mind to us and help us as obedient children to do what we need to do in order to please you. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning we're looking at the subject, without holiness, no heaven. Can I hear everybody say that? Without holiness, no heaven. The Bible is very clear about this, and I want to read to us from Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us let us run with patience the race that is set before us verse 2 
looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked. Verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and life? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, after it yielded the peaceable, or nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Verse 14, everybody. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I read verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel or morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Bring the single unchanging demand of God from all his children in all ages is that we should be holy. He commands us to follow peace with all men, not some men, with all men, and he said, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's why we're considering the subject that is before us this morning. Without holiness of heart, there is no heaven. If we're going to see God and or see him or remain eternally in fellowship with him on the last day, we need to maintain holiness of life. We need to be holy in our conduct. We need to possess the virtues of holiness. We will not be able to see God if we don't have holiness in us. The scripture is very, very direct on this. True holiness. Where there is true holiness, you may be asking, what is holiness? But before you ask the question, what is holiness? Maybe you're here this morning, you say, I want to be holy. But are you holy? And if you're not holy, why are you not holy? God is calling you and me to a life of holiness. There are virtues that exemplify holiness. Virtues that are reflected by holiness. That are the presence of holiness. When there's holiness in a man, when there's holiness in a woman, those things are manifest. They are evident. What are the virtues? If you take the word holiness and you, you know, present it in a vertical way, we take the letters of holiness. H-O-L-I-N-E-S-S. 
we're going to take those letters and you know align them with virtues that are exemplified by a life of holiness let's take h h for humility everybody say humility where there's holiness or holiness there is what there's humility and what's humility humility is as defined by dictionary now it says a modest view of one's own importance so as a, as a child of God, let's take that definition and apply it to ourselves, since that's an acceptable definition to humanity. A modest view of one's own importance. You know, it's also defined as freedom from pride. The world defines it. You know, the body of scholars said holiness is freedom from pride. But if we bring it to the scriptures, we see that that's exactly what God's word expects of us as his children that as a holy man your life is devoid of pride you know you don't carry yourself as if you are you know everything you don't carry yourself as if you are indispensable you don't carry yourself as if everyone needs me but i don't need anyone but we need everyone. We need God in our lives. I pray God will be evident in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Whether it's holiness, the letter O for obedience. There's obedience to the word of God. There's obedience to scriptures. To the injunctions that come from the word of God. Not just that, there's obedience as children to parents. You know, in the Lord. Where there is holiness, there's love. The love that I'm referring to here is not the type of love that is in the world, what we call lust. Call that lust. You know, where there is love, God's kind of love, it, there's selflessness. We see that there is self-denial, as we're going to see that all these qualities are interwoven. So where there is love, agape, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, not to destroy us, not to take advantage of us, but to give us a better life. We also see the letter I, I for integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is to be morally upright. Integrity is to be honest. It's to mean what you say and say what you mean. Integrity is to be incorruptible within and without when you, you're dealings with people you are upright you are honest your dealings with your spouse you're upright with your children you're upright and so God is calling us to a greater walk with him let's look at the letter n n for a new man the Bible says if anybody is in Christ Jesus he is what he is a new creation all things are what are passed away and it says behold see Look at me very well. You can't find any fault in me. Look at me very well. You will have no reason to accuse me. Look at me very well. By the standards of men, I qualify. By the standard of men, you can't put me down. And uh, wasn't that what Samuel did? He came out before Israel and said, Whose ox have I you know, taken? Who have I defrauded? And he was facing the whole children of Israel and he boldly was addressing them. You know who? Who, not one person was able to come out at your place of work can you be accused for wrongdoing accused for lateness accused for being what not straightforward God is calling us to a higher walk with him praise the Lord the letter E stands for entire consecration to be set apart we also see the letter S for self-denial. You're able to deny yourself at times of your legitimate uh, needs. Deny yourself of things that are even, you know, that are accrued to you just for the sake of God, for the sake of the church. We also see the letter S for separation from the world. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And so God is calling us to be separate. Separate from the world not governed by the dictates of the world, 
not controlled by the spirits in the world because there are spirits that control people that are in the world the spirits in the world the spirit of a devil control them lead them to sin lead them to 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 to, to commit iniquity to do things that are unpleasant so as a child of god as a holy man as a holy woman you're separated from the world possession of these virtues is the only thing that can qualify us to see god to do his will on earth and to live with him in eternity pride disobedience hatred self-indulgence and friendship with the world will hinder anyone from seeing and dwelling with god it's repentance only repentance and faith in the cleansing blood of Christ that can make us clean and uh, it's restitution of course you've come into Christ Jesus and the Spirit of God lays in your heart to straighten your ways you say I've repented of my sins but you've stolen before you've taken what does not belong to you you st still adjust yourself you restitute okay you deny yourself of that thing that you took wrongly you restitute to those you've offended you restitute to people that you've taken their things return what is not rightfully yours as long as that thing is in your hand if you are caught you're a thief okay if you stole uh, what is not yours you may say well i'm in christ jesus i'm born again but the car that you're using is a stolen car yes you're a minister in the church you sing a choir, you usher, but the car you're still using. So, well, I'm even carrying the people of God for evangelism. When they need help, I give right. But the car is not yours. Yeah, you've changed the plate number, but the VIN number you couldn't change because it's ascribed to the screen. But the car is not yours. As a child of God, what should you do? You do what? Return the car to who? The rightful owner. If you don't, before God, you're not justified. And before man, it only takes the police to get you one day. You will be referred to as a what? As a thief. You're still a thief. A thief is what the, the, the language that men will use to describe you. So restitution is very important. Making, I would say, follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which, what? No man shall see the Lord. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 33 verse 15. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 15. The scripture says here that he that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Verse 17. Thy eyes shall see who? The king. And I pray this morning that the Lord will give you holiness and prepare you for heaven so that your eyes will see the king when he comes in Jesus' name. It says, their eyes, thy eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. That shall be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 101 verse 4. Psalm 101 verse 4. The Bible says, A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked man who so privily slandereth his neighbor, slandereth his neighbor. Him will I cut off. Him that had an high look, pride, and a proud heart will not I suffer. Verse 6. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked, of the land that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. May the Lord have mercy upon us this morning in Jesus' name. Here we see the Bible telling us about holiness declared through the servant of God, David. So he that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. 
And so here the Bible is very, very clear on what holiness is. And said, so God's eyes are upon the faithful of the land. God is expecting you to be faithful in your heart, faithful in your dealings with man. He's expecting you to walk before him in a perfect way and serve him. Psalm 24, verse 3. Psalm 24, verse 3. Psalm 24, we look at verse 3. The Bible says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands. Everybody say clean hands. And a what? A pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully? Verse 5, everybody. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That will be your, por your portion in Jesus' name. Look at the first point this morning. Call to holiness. Second, we will look at consecration for holiness. And lastly, we're going to look at consistency in holiness. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the very first point. Call to holiness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Again, the Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God has always demanded holiness of heart and life. There had never been a time in history when God tolerated or excused sin in any form. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 11 verse 45. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 45. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 45. The Bible says, For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. God said, He's the Lord that bringeth you up, talking to the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for, for I am holy. Praise the Lord. God has the same expectation as He had for the children of Israel from us, and His condition has not changed. In all ages, in all climes, irrespective of church or church affiliations, his holy nature demands holiness from those who worship him. Holiness of heart and life remain his call and demand for anyone who wants to follow and serve him. You want to follow God, you want to serve God on earth, and you want to see him at the end, holiness is expected of you. The Lord wants us to be sanctified. He wants us to be purified. He wants his children. He says, if you look at Leviticus 20, verse 7. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7. Leviticus chapter 20. You can read verse 7. It says, Are you there? Leviticus chapter what? Verse what? If you're there, praise the Lord. Let's read together, everybody. Once again, everybody, sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. Make no mistake, it is God addressing the people. He says, sanctify yourselves, be holy. And he said, for I am the Lord your God. You know, holiness is the attribute of God. And he wants man to be like him. Praise the Lord. God is still holy. Can I hear an amen to that? He has not changed. Can I talk to your neighbor and say, God is still holy? He has not changed. And he will never change. Actually, God declares that in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. He said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. If God said to the sons of Jacob that they are not consumed, you will not be consumed by the worldliness in America in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be consumed by the fashion of this world in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be consumed by the music of this world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will not be consumed by the gimmicks of Satan. Praise the Lord. So let's apply this to our relationship with people in marriage, in your job, in your interaction with man, with your neighbors, your friends, what kind of friends do you have? What kind of friends do you have? I ask you again. 
What kind of plans do you make? Do you make plans that are without God's will, or outside of God's will? Plans that minus God. God is asking us, even our attitude, our thoughts. You know, at times, you can look at somebody and say, he's a child of God. Uh, this brother is prayerful. This sister is prayerful. He's an evangelist. You know, we talk of Deeper Life Bible Church. He is the church in the church roster. He's a member of Deeper Life Bible Church. But the question that God is asking uh, perhaps we ask ourselves and you know ourselves is are we members of the heavenly church the church of heaven is your name written in the book of life you may be known to be in the church but is your name written in the book of life you may be born into a christian family but is your name written in the book of life god's own book where nobody can bribe his or her way into. You cannot pay your way into that book. The Bible says, except, you know, without holiness, except there's holiness, we cannot what? We cannot see God. So you may have Christian names, but it's your name written in the book of life. I read to us at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. Turn your Bible with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. From verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification. Verse 5, not in lust, of course, in sanctification and honor, not in lust of concupiscence, even as who? The Gentiles which know not God. So the Lord is saying that you cannot carry yourselves, behave like the Gentiles, unbelievers who do not know God. Verse 7, for God has not called us unto what? Uncleanness, but unto what? unto holiness call unto holiness he therefore was eight that despise it despise it not man but god who has also given unto us his holy spirit so bring any activity that can decrease our thirst and hunger for holiness is never the will of god we do not become holy because we want to please man uh, of course, it is because, primarily because we want to please God who is holy and requires holiness from you and me. And he requires holiness not just from us, but from all his saints at large. Whatever people may do for or against us, the Lord's injunction remains the same. Be ye holy for, for I am holy. First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. 14. The Bible says here as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversations. You know, some people say that they are holy, but it does not reflect in the way they talk. Uh, at times you hear people say that my Christianity is in my heart. You know, I am born again. It's about my heart. It is not about my look. It is not about what I say. But the Bible is very, very clear here. So where do you get that from? The Bible says here, but as he which has called you is holy, so be holy in all manner of what? Of conversation. Because it is written, be what? Holy, for I am, I am holy. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will make you holy in Jesus' name. Verse 12, it says, Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be... Actually, I'm reading from uh, 2 Peter now, 3, verse 11. 2 Peter 3, 11. Let's turn to 2 Peter 3, 11. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? In all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens 
being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness verse 14 everybody wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent that ye may make that ye may be found of him in what in peace without spot and blameless i pray that that will be your portion in jesus name no brother the reason god has called us for god calling us out of sin and the world of darkness and evil is so that we might live a righteous a pure and sanctified life god can make us holy if we will commit and consecrate ourselves to him that leads us to the second point consecration for holiness everybody say that uh, after me consecration for holiness say that again consecration for holiness second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 what does it mean to be consecrated consecration is about being set apart for a godly for a special use second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 bible says here be ye not what unequally yoked together with unbelievers so are we reading the same bible this morning i, I don't hear a response from us are we reading the same bible this morning can you read that again after uh, after the count of two one two the bible says what be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers so if you are you know if you are so yoked with unbelievers that you cannot you know you cannot separate yourself from them then you are also an unbeliever right if you cannot be separate if you, can, if you are disobedient to what god is saying here it's actually not a suggestion god is not proposing to you god is not begging you the bible is saying to us the scripture is very definite be ye not be ye not for those of us that have been to the military when you are told be ye not what does that sound like it's a command right it's a word of it's a command be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers the Bible tells us the reason why we should not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It says, for what friendship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has what? Light and, and darkness. Verse 15, everybody. And what concord had what? Christ with Belial. What part had they, he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with? With idols. For ye are the temple of a living God. Say, I am the temple of a living God. I am the temple of a living God. Declare that. Say that for the last time. For I am the temple of a living God. The temple within the physical temple. I am the temple of the living God. I pray God will make you one in jesus name as i pray that god will make you one in jesus name so as god has said i will dwell in them god wants to dwell in us and walk in them and i will be their god and they shall be my people wherefore come out from among them and be separate said the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you that unclean thing can be in the form of a book that unclean thing can be presented on the computer that unclean thing can be on your cell phones that unclean thing can be you know any object the bible says what that we should do what touch not touch not touch not everybody say touch not and if you are touching what do you do refrain stop touching can i hear an amen in the house I didn't hear a good amen in the house. Amen. The Bible is very, very clear. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. Do you want to see God? Who wants to see God here this morning? I want to see God. 
The world is not my home. I will not perish with the world. I will not perish with the wicked. I want to see God. Touch not unclean thing. And the Lord said, I will receive you. I pray God will give you the grace. I pray he will give you abundant grace to be the doer of his word in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises daily beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. Perfect. If I use the word perfecting holiness in the fear of God. To get sanctified, we must consecrate, set ourselves apart from the world unto God. You must present yourself. Say, God, hey, this is my life. Take. Here is, just take me as I am, oh God. I, I, I understand. I can't be holy without you making me holy. And Lord, from today, I'm going to, I renounce the world, okay? Lord, I'm, I'm very serious. I'm serious about this, Lord. I mean, I've been unfaithful in time past, but Lord God, I am making up my mind to become faithful. The world has so swayed me away. The world has so carried me away. I've been deceived by the world. I've been deceived by my friends. I've been deceived by my spouse, perhaps. I've been deceived. And I got this job. I thought I was, I thought I could serve you in this job. But I've seen the Lord, as long as I remain in this job, my spiritual life is being buried. As long as I'm in this job, Lord, I am compromising and Lord going forward. In fact, they will not fire me, but I fire myself. From today, I am not going back to that job. I don't need any approval to be fired. You don't need see, you don't need any approval to fire yourself. You can fire yourself without anybody's approval. You fire yourself before heaven fires you. Because the trumpet sounds when you are compromising. I would say if a righteous man will renounce righteousness and go into wickedness, and he dies in that wickedness, it will be disastrous. The Bible makes us to know. So why do you want to continue in sin? Why do you want to continue in compromise? I mean, I'm not talking about people out there, unbelievers out there, infidels out there, sons of Belial out there. We're talking about people who are in the faith. People who have come into the light, and they know what it means to be in the light. But because of condition, because of, of pressure, because of, uh, of uh, you know, of the, the, the pressure to pay bills, the, the pressure to get promoted, the, the pressure to be rich, the pressure to, to, have, to be famous, the pressure to pass an examination, you're compromising. The Lord is saying that we should do what? Come out, renounce that condition, repent, and get out of that condition. And God will have mercy upon you and have mercy upon his church in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. What does it mean to beseech? I plead with you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What body is he talking about? Can you lay your hand upon your head or lay your hand upon your chest or lay your hand upon your you know, you are, this is your body. This is your body, okay? The Bible says you should present this body as a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. Your body is your body. It's not, your body is what we can see. So you can't say you're a child of God and your, 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 your friends are, are unbelievers. Your, your, your best friends are evildoers, you know, who are, are coarse, use abusive words. You can't say you're a child of God and, you know, yet your company is a company of prostitutes. You're not even there to be, you're not, you can't claim you're, you're going to them to preach the word of God to them. You're going to them because you're interested in going to them. You can't say, uh, uh, you know, you're a child of God and, uh, you know, you, ha you still have communion and fellowship with, you know, people who, may I put it this way, people who fight the institution that God, that God has instituted, marriage, if you serve marriage. Your best, best friends at your place of work are divorcees. Very soon, you'll be divorced as well. Except you do what? I, I can't hear a response. Except you do what? You move away. They're going to influence you very soon. They are going to. Your ideology is going to be changed. They're going to sow seeds in you. And you're going to take that into your own home. Very soon, they tell, they've told you you're so important. Uh, do you know in America here, women are important. Who told you? America doesn't need to tell us that women are important. God has already told us in his word that women are very important. 
I don't need anybody to tell, tell. As a woman, I want you to turn to a fellow woman, or if you're a man, if there's a woman be, beside you, turn to that woman and say, you are very, very important. So nothing new. But that importance is in humility. That importance is in lowliness of heart. That importance is, you know, in obedience to the word of God. As you stoop low, you overcome. You will rise high. You will rise high this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good. And your life is going to prove to the world that following God is good in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life is going to speak to the world that righteousness is different from unrighteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Your family is going to prove to the world that God is still on the throne in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Psalm 118 verse 27. God is the Lord, of course. He has showed, he said, he has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords even on the horns of the altar. And Luke 175 declares that in holiness and righteousness before him all the days for our life. Praise God. If you look at David, David understood this very well. Look at what, he, uh, what God used David to, 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 to put down in Psalm 1 verse 1. Psalm 1 verse 1. Open to Psalm 1 verse 1. We're talking about consecration for holiness. Psalm 1 verse 1. One, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Lord, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth his own heart, and change it not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. And you will not be moved in Jesus' name. Amen. Consecration brings us into consciousness of God's presence. It makes us to live in full consciousness of God's watchful eyes. It makes us to live in the consciousness of the fact that the Lord sees everything we think and we say and do. Whether in the secret or in the open, every day of our lives, the knowledge, this knowledge should make you and me to commit ourselves to doing his will at all times. Christ-like holiness is practical. It's not theoretical. It has to be manifest. Praise the Lord. Not theoretical. It is a practical thing. Lastly, we look at consistency in holiness. Consistency in holiness. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Brain, we need to understand as you turn to Luke 1 5 that God demands that whatever condition we find ourselves in life, whatever privileges we enjoy, we should remain consistent in holiness. Answers, of course, when we are consistent in holiness, it will cause our prayers to be answered by God. And we can see that in Luke chapter 1 verse 5 in the case of Zechariah and his wife. The Bible, uh, let's look at Luke uh, chapter 1. Turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 1, verse 5. Luke 1, 5. Bible says here, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abir. And his wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both what? They were both what? Righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. The Bible uses the word blameless. They walked before God blamelessly. And I pray that as God did it for uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, he will do it for you as well today in Jesus' name. Men as well as women are called to live a consistent holy life in the sight of God. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. The Bible tells us there that, uh, you know, holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 3, I look at verse 4. The Bible says here, 
But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great prize. Verse 5, For after this manner in the old time, holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. The same First Peter chapter 3, verse 6. First Peter chapter 3, verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters or ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life. And your prayers, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, have com having compassion one for another. Love as brethren, uh, be pitiful, be cautious, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing. Uh, it says, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and seek good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Verse 11, everybody. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Verse 12, everybody. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You will not be an evildoer in Jesus' name. I say you will not be an evildoer in Jesus' name. Finally, we look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, which we, where we started from. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. I declare to you this morning, and declare that to yourself as well, I will not sell my birthright. I will not sell my Christian experience for any reason in Jesus' name. For you know that, you know that how, or you know how that afterward, afterward, at times people say, I will, I will do it and God understands and uh, I will come out of it. See, after, I will repent later. You, but you never know. You never design life. You are not, you, you're not in control. You are not in control of your life. Your life is not your own. You are not the only agent at work in life. There are agents of darkness. There are agents of hell. There are human agents. While the Spirit of God may be saying, don't go. Don't do. You're a child of God. The agents of darkness are telling you, go ahead, don't worry. God understands. Did God say you shouldn't eat the fruit that is in the garden? No, no. God, don't see. God understands. Don't. God, see, he knows that when you eat it, you're going to be wiser. Don't worry. You will just go on your knees and you repent and this and that and, and nobody's going to know you know god is not if you do no, no member of your church is going to know what you're doing you know they will never find out but god knows and as that person decides to go into darkness the agents of darkness wait there the devil is willing he's as a roaring lion he seeks for who he will what he will devour and as people are compromised, he seeks to put a wedge so they don't go back to light uh, so they can die in that condition and perish. But I pray that the Lord will help you. You will not go into sin. You will not go into idolatry. You will not compromise your Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ. So for you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. You know, at times men may accept you uh, but God has given you a long rope. God may reject you from doing certain things for him. Do you know God may have made up his mind on you as far as certain tasks? Yes, you are in the kingdom, but by the virtue of your record with God, God does not trust you again. He's given you one opportunity, second, third, fourth. Yes, you're a child of God, but you can't build for him, okay? 
You can't build for him. Or he will pass on from you and allow other people to do that thing. You may say, I'm in the kingdom, but by virtue of your disobedience and stubbornness, yeah, you're in charge, char but you over and over you continue to crucify Christ. And God says, Well, I, I pray that you be saved. I hope God save him. Let him let him get to heaven. But as far as this mission. I will look for somebody else. You know, as far as this walk, I'm not going to use him. He's, he can't handle it, okay? He can't handle this mission. He can't handle this responsibility. And God takes away that responsibility from you and passes the bulk to another person and blesses that person abundantly. And then you miss out in that blessing. I pray that your life will be consistent with God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say, I pray that you'll be consistent with God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Esau was rejected. He found no place of repentance. He sought it carefully with tears, but it never, never, never came back. But I believe everybody here sitting, listening to me, I believe the grace of God can reach out to you this morning. I believe that God has not given up on you this morning. And he doesn't give up on his own. But start to walk consistently with God from today. To see God's face, the Lord demands that we should be holy all the days of our lives. I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet as we go to the Lord in prayer. We've had the word of God this morning. Without holiness, no heaven. Without holiness, no heaven. Without holiness, no heaven. It is very, very clear. The scripture is very, very, very direct. The scripture is very, very clear as far as making heaven. It's a full of peace with all men and holiness without which no one shall see the Lord. Why not pray for yourself this morning? Commit your ways to the Lord. The mercy of God is still there. The grace of God is still there. The God, the Lord that made it, the God that did it for the saints of old, David, and did it for the people of old, for his disciples, for the apostles, for Peter and John, he can do it for you today. He can do it for you today. The Lord can use you. God can make you holy. But if you have not given your life to Christ, can anything good come out of you? No. Holiness can never be your product, can never be your virtue, except you surrender entirely to the Lord. Why not try Jesus this morning? Why not give God a chance this morning? Why not surrender yourself? Give your life over to Christ. Give your life over to Christ. Give your life over to Christ. God is calling you to salvation. God is calling you to righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation. It is sin that brings a reproach. It's a sin that brings a reproach and brings disgrace. Sin brings a reproach and brings disgrace. God is calling you to grace. He's asking you to be committed. Give your time the best of your time. Give your heart the best of you, your heart. Give your heart to Christ. Surrender yourself to him. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I present myself to you. I want you to make me holy, O oh God. I respond to the call to holiness, your call to, to holiness. You know, the, the, the holiness is not a construct of man. It is the design of God. He said, be holy as I am holy. Be holy as I am holy. You know, being a member of Deeper Life Bible Church does not qualify you uh, to, to see God at the end alone. You see, it doesn't qualify you. In no way does it qualify you. But are you a member of the church ecclesia? Are you a member of the church of God in heaven? Does God know you? Does God know you? Does God know you? Are you in God's book of life? Is your name written there in the book white and clear? In the book of God's kingdom, is your name written there? Men may know you as a member of a church, but, you know, uh, does heaven see you as a thief? Uh, uh, does heaven see you as, uh, you know, as an adulterer? You lost after women, you lost after men from your heart. Uh, does heaven see you as an immoral person, even though you carry big titles? Does heaven see you as, uh, as a murderer in the heart? You, are, you hate people in the heart, but you haven't, even, you haven't even executed it. But God sees your heart, and he sees that uh, you disqualify. But God, if you will come,
come to him today, if you will give your life to him today and tell him, purge me, O oh God, purge me with his soul, cleanse me, make me a new man, make me a new creature, make me, Lord, make me a child of God, take away sin from me. I renounce my evil, I renounce my wickedness, I renounce, O oh God, personal sin, uh, personal sins, uh, familiar sins, things that you have so gotten used to. They say personal computer, personal PC, personal computer has become personal sin. I renounce everything. I renounce those things. Uh, you know, I pray God will deliver his church and make his church, purify his church in Jesus' name. I say, I pray God will purify his church, purify, I say, Lord, purify my heart, purge me, O God, cleanse me with his soap, O God, and I will be clean in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we'll pray. The you know, songwriter puts it this way, Lord, I have started to walk in the light that shines on my pathway so clearly, so bright. I have bid the world and its follies adieu. And now with my Savior, I mean to go through. I mean to go through. I'm going through. I'm going through. You are going through in the name of Jesus Christ. As a pilgrim in this world, I am going through. You are going through in the name of Jesus Christ. However, I will pay the price. Whatever others do, I will take the way with the Lord's despised few. I am going through Jesus. I am going through. Many ones started to run in this race, but with our Redeemer, they could not keep the pace. Others accepted, but it was new. But not every man or not very many seem bound to go through. Let me but follow my Lord all alone and have for my pillow like Jacob a stone rather than vain worldly pleasures pursue than, than turn from this pathway and fail to go through. Come then, my comrades, and, and walk in this way that leads to the kingdom of unending day. Turn from your idols and join with the few. Start with your Savior and keep going through. Keep going through. I say you will go through in the name of Jesus Christ. The song says, uh, Lord, I have started to walk in the light. We're going to sing that song as we wrap up this morning. Lord, I have started to walk. Oh, give us a key. Lord, I have started. The song is going to be projected. Open your eyes. You're going to sing. As you sing, you assure yourself. You strengthen yourself. Open your eyes and you're going to be projected. Sing it confidently. Sing it like you mean it. It's a prayer. Sing it like you mean it. And the Lord will see you. You're going to go through in the name of Jesus. I'm going through with Jesus, I'm going 
Let me but follow my Lord all alone And have for my pillow like Jacob a soul Rather than bring worldly pleasures pursue Then turn from this pathway and fail to go through I'm going through, yes, Lord, I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever all must do. I'll take the way with the lost, despised few. I'm going through, oh, Jesus, I'm going through. this morning a second a few seconds to commune with your maker this morning the Lord said to Peter Peter the devil desires to sift you as wheat but I prayed for you he did not understand a moment to assure God that you will remain in the faith no matter what the law will keep you the law will keep you from stumbling the law will keep you even in adversity you may be going through things there's nothing that you're going through that is not common to man whatever you're going through somebody else had gone through it many turned back but there are others that went through it, overcame. You will overcome. You will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will give you grace. All the enticements in the world will not get you. The enticement of men, women, the enticement of those boys, all those girls out there. You are different. There's no communion between light and darkness the Lord will deliver you then make up your mind that you will be different from the world make up your mind to renounce the world make up your mind to stand with God make up your mind to be steadfast to be unmovable no matter what make up your mind you will go through in Jesus precious name we have prayed we thank you father for your word has come to us this morning we're praying the Lord this word that this word be magnified in us going forward in the name of Jesus Christ we pray that this word will take root in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ as we go out into the world, go out about, go about our businesses, go to work, school, wherever it may be, we pray that you will help us, that we will not forget who we are, that we are children of God, children of the living God, of a holy God. We pray, therefore, Father, in all manner of conversation and actions, we pray that our life will reflect the light of God. Our life will reflect the holiness that God is calling for. In the name of Jesus Christ. We'll not be proud. We'll be humble. We'll be obedient. 
the love of God will be in us richly. Integrity, transparency will not be deceitful in our dealings with man. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that when people look at us, they will see the newness of Christ in us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, O oh God, we will not be angry people, uncontrolled people, Lord, backbiters and gossipers, people who knock heads. We pray, Father, that self-denial will be our emblem in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord.